morning, San Antonio starts right now. And right now on GMSA, the second plane carrying Americans that were trapped on board a cruise ship has just landed at Kelly Field here in San Antonio. Sarah Costa live on the tarmac with more about those evacuees and what happens next. Coming up, a busy weekend on the campaign trail as the 2020 race heads west to Nevada. I'm Andrew Dimbert in Washington. And take a look. This is what you're facing as you head out today. It's a muggy, yucky kind of morning and very mild. And Mike says, oh, just wait. Good morning, everybody. It is Monday. It is February 17th. Also known as President's Day. Yeah, happy President's Day. Happy President's Day, everybody. It's yucky out there. Yeah, drizzle, mist, fog, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And uh, what, 64 degrees? So we're 20 degrees above normal right now. And and just coming in this morning, it was just that uh, you can just feel it hanging in the air. Yeah, all it's that not pretty. And we're not, we're not in for a pretty week. Itself. No, it's going to be uh, gray, cold, damp most of the week, but it's going to be very warm today as we're starting off very, very warm and temperatures will continue to uh, go up into the upper 70s later on today. This is live cam, uh, kind of soupy looking, obviously. There is a dense fog advisory for a good chunk of our area up until 10 o'clock this morning. Visibility uh, is less than a mile out there at the airport, but already down to zero. Castroville, Hondo, and a lot of these single digits right there, that's um, just above zero. So out of the airport, the last reading was about a half mile visibility and then not bad around Del Rio, Carrizo Springs, Catula. You had all that very thick fog yesterday, but it's kind of right in the middle of the area this morning and temperatures, like we said, are 20 degrees above normal, mid upper fifties, low sixties around here. Obviously there is a slew of humidity. We're going to make it up into the uh, mid to upper seventies later on today. There could be a peak of sunshine. Wouldn't count on it, but just a mention of it. Also, a few sprinkly showers are possible. Tomorrow is going to be very warm as well, starting off. We'll start off pretty much like we are right now. And then about midday is when that front comes on through here. And yeah, it's just going to be sort of yes, sort of weather throughout the rest of the week. And like I said, cloudy, cool and damp throughout the rest of the week. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Hitting the roads. Boy, you want to allow yourself a lot of extra time. I'm sure Officer Marcus Trujillo can attest to that. Good morning, sir. Good morning. And you're exactly right, Mike. If folks, good morning. If you do have to venture out this morning, you're going to need to give it some extra time, not because of all of the traffic the volume of traffic, but actually just because of the conditions out there. We have a couple of accidents eastbound I-10, so headed from the downtown area back out towards 410 right there at uh, Hildebrand. Watch out that left hand lane block. Looks like they're going to block the two left hand lanes and then coming inbound. They just cleared up an accident Santa Rosa and eastbound I-10 right there. The access now that's the one hit 10 at Hildebrand. Take a look. We have another one. This one's out there. 604 Braun. Someone taking the uh, turnaround there just a little bit too quickly ended up on the median. So remember, reduce that speed, increase that following distance and put away those distractions this morning. Mark and Leslie. Thank you very much, Marcus. Good to see you, sir. Happening now, quarantine passengers from that Diamond Princess cruise ship in Japan landed in San Antonio just before four this morning. One of the two planes carrying the 340 American evacuees from the ship landed at Kelly Field and will be taken to Lackland for a mandatory 14 day quarantine. Sarah Costa live near the runway where the plane landed. Sarah, what are you seeing out there right now? Good morning, Mark and Leslie. I'm off camera right now, so you can see that plane that just landed about 30 minutes ago. And we're waiting for those passengers to board. What we do know is at 424, that plane door opened and people on the run, one runway waiting to greet those passengers walked out in hazmat suits and face masks, boarded the plane. Now we and they closed the door and now we are waiting for those passengers to get off the plane and the fog out here did not make this journey any easier. Our video capturing what what we could see since visibility was very limited. Docked in Japan since February 3rd, the passengers were taken by bus from the cruise trip from the cruise ship directly to Tokyo, where two planes were waiting for them. The latest information we have from the U.S. State and Health and Human Services is that out of the 380 American quarantine passengers on the Diamond Princess cruise ship, 340 were put on those two planes. One of those planes landing in California at Travis Air Force Base overnight. The second here in San Antonio, where Joint Base San Antonio has been making preparations for these evacuees who will now begin the quarantine process for the coronavirus. 
We do know that 14 of the 340 cruise ship American evacuees have been confirmed to have the coronavirus. Now, whether those 14 confirmed cases were on the San Antonio plane is still unclear. We are still waiting for that information. The State Department saying overnight that those passengers with the virus were allowed to board the flight, sharing the plane with other evacuees who don't have the virus because those with the virus did not have any symptoms. U.S. officials say those passengers were being isolated separately from other passengers on the flight. Any of those evacuees that test positive or become symptomatic will be taken to an off-base facility regulated by the CDC. The Department of Defense announced that the availability of the quarantine zone at Lackland has been extended through mid-March. And what we're looking at now is just that plane that landed we saw people in hazmat suits that were here at Kelly Field go on to that plane and then they close the door. Just keep it's it open. up. Oh, the door's opening? It's open. The door just opened. That's my photographer. He has a better view than me right now. So that door just opened and just keep it here on GMSA and on KSAT.com and we'll bring you the latest. Live from Kelly Field, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Leslie. All right, we'll continue to check in with you throughout the morning, Sarah. Thank you so much. And just before 2.30 this morning, the first flight carrying Diamond Princess cruise ship passengers from Japan landed in California. Passengers will be quarantined to Travis Air Force Base for two weeks there. As Sarah mentioned, about 380 Americans were on the cruise ship. In your morning headlines, less than a week away from the battle for Nevada in the 2020 presidential race. Well, early voting started over the weekend as candidates hit the state ahead of the next debate, which is Wednesday. ABC's Andrew Dimbert is in Washington with more. Over 18,000 Democrats turned out for the first day in the first contest in the West. For the candidates, please welcome Mayor Pete. Leading the field with the most delegates so far, former South Bend, Indiana Mayor Pete Buttigieg. He's taking aim at conservative talk radio host Rush Limbaugh, who said he won't get elected because he's been kissing his husband on stage after debates. I'm pretty good at holding my tongue, uh, but it is tempting to point out some differences between my understanding of family values and those of this president and his supporters like Rush Limbaugh. Former Vice President Joe Biden is counting on a comeback and attacking Bernie Sanders' health care plans. He's been talking about health care, me Medicare for all, universal health care for 35 years. Nothing's happened. I helped get past Obamacare. Sanders, meanwhile, going after billionaire Michael Bloomberg. But he thinks he can buy this election. Well, I got news from Mr. Bloomberg, and that is the American people are sick and tired of billionaires buying elections. Bloomberg is not competing in Nevada, but he was on the minds of many of the candidates. Mike Bloomberg. Uh, Michael Bloomberg. Uh, Mayor Bloomberg. Who would like to see him in the next debate. I can't beat him on the airwaves, but I can beat him on the debate stage. President Trump plans to hold a rally the day before the caucus in Nevada as he continues to try and disrupt the Democrats. Andrew Dimber, ABC News, Washington. Well, more than 1,100 former prosecutors and other Department of Justice officials are calling on Attorney General William Barr to resign. Former DOJ officials who served in Republican and Democratic administrations posted a statement Sunday reading in part, and this is a quote, Mr. Barr's actions in doing the president's personal bidding unfortunately speaks louder than his words. This comes about as career prosecutors withdrew from the Roger Stone case after Barr overruled their sentencing. President Donald Trump, the second president ever to attend the Daytona 500, and as Grand Marshal, he had the honor of commanding drivers to start their engines. President Trump made a grand interest before the start of the race, gave thousands of fans a flyover of Air Force One, then rode onto the uh, racetrack in a presidential motorcade as the audience applauded. Right now at 439, 64 degrees. A woman who once ran for mayor in Colorado Springs is now behind bars. She allegedly plotted a scheme in an effort to kidnap a newborn baby. Still ahead on GMSA, how the woman reached out to new mothers by offering free newborn photo sessions. And next to GMSA, how Spurs superstar Patty Mills decided to spend his time off during All-Star Weekend. And a look outside with live cam. You probably need your umbrella. You don't really need a coat today, but you will later this week. My cash forecast coming up.
A lot of NBA players who uh, were not attending All-Star Weekend typically take time to spend time at home or out with friends, but superstar, uh, Spurs star rather, Patty Mills headed back home to donate supplies to towns affected by those Australian wildfires. He posted several pictures and videos on his social media accounts over the weekend, showed Patty buying supplies and speaking to locals who lost so much in the fires, even helped build hydro panels. Well, a little later this week, the Spurs will continue their rodeo road trip. On Friday, they face the Utah Jazz at 8 p.m., and then they travel to Oklahoma City and take on the Thunder Sunday at 6 p.m. 442, 64 degrees. The stars of the new James Bond movie, No Time to Die, won't be doing promotional appearances in China. Still ahead on GMSA, why the studio decided to cancel that promo tour. The woman behind bars after she allegedly posed as a baby photographer in an effort to kidnap a newborn. Details in your GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, fake baby photographer. Hi, my name is Julia Parker. Just last year, Julia Parker was running for mayor of Colorado Springs. This morning, she is behind bars. We believe she was attempting to find a small female infant and was going to kidnap the baby. Investigators say the 38-year-old posing as a baby portrait photographer reached out to a Facebook mom's group, offering free newborn photo sessions to build up her portfolio. She believed that she was drugged and that they were going to take her baby. Through our investigation, we've determined that that probably was the case. Coming up at 7 a.m., we'll tell you about the other mothers now coming forward who say they too contacted Parker about the photography ad and why law enforcement officials are now asking for their help. With your GMA First Look, I'm Elizabeth Herr, ABC News, New York. Well, something to look forward to this weekend. 500 native trees will be distributed to the public on Saturday at Confluence Park. The San Antonio River Foundation is hosting the event. And San Antonio Parks and Recreation Department is supplying the trees. Every household will be given only one free one-gallon tree. No ID or utility bill will be required for pickup. Just go to ksat.com if you'd like more information. Okay, you're going to want to keep your eyes peeled for this new potato bar coming to Converse. Jacked Potato Bar has a variety of healthy options. Whether you want leafy green salads or a fully loaded baked potato, they've got you covered. Grand opening set for Wednesday for both those stories and more. You can find more information right now online at ksat.com. A potato bar. That sounds yummy. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that sounds good. Hey, if you're headed to the rodeo today, there are a lot of events happening. At 8.30 this morning, there's a horse judging contest at Expo Hall. From 2 to 8 tonight, Robert Castillo's BMX freestyle team is performing. And country singer Morgan Wallen will put on the big show tonight. The concert, by the way, starts at 7. Right now it's 447. Let's check the roadways. Potential for a very sloppy commute. It is definitely that, Leslie. And as we take a look at the roadways, folks, uh, some of the other accidents have cleared, and the uh, tow truck is now at that accident up there, 1604 at I-10. So, if, or four, there we go, 1604 at Broad. So if you look at uh, turnaround lane, there is... Uh, supposed to be a sign standing right about there. There's the sign. There's the vehicle. We have the tow truck out there, so it will be clearing up here shortly. Now, some of the uh, trans guy cameras look like this, where you really can't see much, and others, the cameras, uh, the lenses themselves are clear, but because of the fog and the mist out there, really can't make out where those lanes are. This is 1604 at Culebra. Moving over to some other areas, there's a I-10-410 down there somewhere, and then 410 Austin Highway also having to deal with this. So everywhere we look, folks, you will have to slow down, reduce that speed, increase that following distance, and just uh, look at that sheen to the roadway as the headlights reflect off the blacktop there. Definitely not the morning for you to be running late, trying to make up time because you're probably not going to do it and you'll end up in an accident. Remember those long turns and curves you want to slow down well ahead of those areas this morning. Yeah, our neck of the woods northwest this morning was lots of fun coming in, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's a mess. Mm -hmm. It's going to be this way all week. It's just basically, yes. Uh, this morning, we've got the you know fog advisory. Um, then it's going to be very warm in the afternoon. There could be a peak of sunshine, but the transition is going to be taking place timing-wise sometime tomorrow afternoon. The front will move through. Winds will shift around, and then it's just going to stay. It's not like the front's going to clear us on out. It's going to be a gray, cool. This is what it looked like yesterday. Yeah, that's actually a down at the bottom. You can see a little bit of the... Uh, Maybe the roadway below the the banner there, but yeah, foggy start. So this is what you can expect for this morning. Thanks very much for the KSAC Connect. Hey, that just kind of transitioned into 
a picture of nothing again, just a lot of fog out there and dense fog advisory up until 10 o'clock for the heart of our viewing area. Pretty much so the contrast was yesterday. The thickest fog was out here from Del Rio down through Eagle Pass, Catula, and now you almost don't have anything. Visibility half mile at the airport, uh, just under a mile Randolph Port SA quarter mile heading out there in toward Medina County and Kerrville just at a mile visibility. And again, these numbers will change. They may go up a little bit. They may drop down. Uh, I don't see them visibility going up too awfully much, but pretty good from Rock Springs Junction Del Rio and down along the uh, Rio Grande Valley over there. But to elsewhere, there is the very, very thick fog. All that mist as well. It's just kind of hanging there in the air. If you stood outside long enough, you would get wet just because of that mist hanging in the air. 64 in town right now, about 20 degrees above normal. Kerrville 59, 63 in Valverde. Here's what it looks like with the uh, computer model. And again, there could be a couple of breaks in the clouds today. I wouldn't count on a lot if there is a little bit of sunshine. Great, but basically cloudy skies out there. Also a shower or two is possible today, but that's not going to be very likely. Then we go into tomorrow and we get the good surge of moisture continuing to come on in here. So we'll have the same situation tomorrow. Mist and fog, maybe a sprinkly shower or two. And then you saw in the afternoon this line trying to develop there. That's the front that's going to start to work its way on through. That will help to touch off a couple of showers. Rain chances still aren't that great, but a couple of showers, maybe even a thunderstorm as that front slides on through here. And that's going to be dropping temperatures down as we go on into Wednesday. Here's what it looks like as far as the wind shift and the humidity. We stay very, very humid through the rest of today into tomorrow morning and about midday. And again, it depends on the computer model. One has it coming through early afternoon. Another has the front coming through not till later on in the afternoon. But I think temperatures, we stay about 70 and then start to drop down later on in the day and here comes that drier air coming on in here and now don't get fooled by the fact that I say drier air because the problem is that's here at the surface. We're going to have an overrunning situation which means cold air at the surface, gray skies, drizzly, wet, damp, just stay at home kind of weather. It looks like the rest of the week. 72 degrees today at noon, cloudy skies and then a high today up to 78. So very, very warm, lots of clouds, perhaps a peak of sunshine and then can't rule out a shower. Tomorrow we start off the same. Cold front comes through later on about midday. A few showers, 70 degrees. Temperatures are going to be dropping down to 50 and then not really moving all that much on Wednesday. It is going to be on the breezy side. We'll have some uh, light rain around here and then 45 starting off on Thursday. Temperatures don't really move all that much. We only stay in the 40s. A little bit of sunshine Friday, Saturday. We make it back to normal by Sunday but not an overabundance of sunshine this week, and it's going to be cold and damp Wednesday through, well, pretty much the end of the week. And then Sunday, another chance of rain again. I need to wash my car at some point. Mm -hmm. How's about next week, maybe? <laughs> like that, isn't it? Yeah, I but get, get on the two-week plan. 452, 64 degrees. The movie Sonic the Hedgehog broke box office records this weekend and had a record debut for a movie based on a video game. Off a video game, I should say. Still ahead on GMSA, how much it made in opening weekend. I'm Sonic, a little ball of super energy in an extremely handsome package. 57 million bucks for Sonic the Hedgehog. Nailed it! That's a record debut for a movie based on a video game and caps a three-month release delay while the studio redesigned the title character following fan backlash when the first trailer was released. The island's twisting what we asked for. Fantasy Island bowed in third with a better than expected $12.4 million. There's only one thing I have to worry about right now, and that's going down. The black comedy Downhill took a dive, 10th place, 4.6 million. Despite a diagnosis of walking pneumonia earlier in the day, Elton John managed to make it through most of his Auckland, New Zealand shows Sunday night before he lost his voice and was led from the stage in tears. He apologized afterward on Twitter, telling fans, I gave it all I had. Where's 007? You won't see the cast of the new James Bond film, No Time to Die, doing promotional appearances in China. The studios canceled the promo tour in the world's second largest movie market due to ongoing concerns there about the coronavirus. No Time to Die opened stateside April 10th. And Green Day frontman Billy Joe Armstrong turns 48 today. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Christopher Watson, ABC News. Three minutes till the top of the hour.
a new gadget to help him you do more than just sweep and mop. Later on GMSA, while well, you want to throw out the old Roomba. Oh, no, don't throw it out. Don't Sell it. it out. Sell it. Those, okay. those are pricey. Yeah, they are. Live from Chase at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Potential coronavirus patients arriving in San Antonio just uh, in the last hour or so. Just ahead, we have the latest as they prepare to be quarantined. A woman recovering after she was hit by a car late last night. What police have to say about the incident. Not a very good start to a Monday out there. Fog, mist, drizzle, and we are looking at a huge drop in temperatures yet again. When will the cold air arrive? Mike Osterhage is standing by. Good morning. It's Monday, February 17th. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. President's Day. It is President's Day. So before we check in with weather and your traffic, we want to let you know about a few closures today. Most municipal offices will be closed today in observance of the holiday, but public safety and emergency services will remain open. Garbage will be collected as normal. Oh, it is not a pretty start to the Monday, Mike. Mm -mm. Yeah, we got a lot of mist and drizzle out there. Fog is very, very thick in places. As I've been saying, you could just stand outside and you would be kind of damp after a while. You'd, you'd get wet just because that mist is hanging in the air right now. Temperatures are extremely warm. We're 20 degrees basically above normal right now. 64 degrees uh, here in town, 55 in Rock Springs, and the humidity, dew point 63. You get above 60, you really start to feel it. And that combined with the fact that it's neck and neck with the air temperature. Yeah, that's given us all that fog. Visibility is very, very low right now. As a matter of fact, there is a dense fog advisory in effect for kind of the heart of our viewing area. Uh, all of the metro area going up I-35 and then off to the east. Not much fog off to the west this morning, unlike yesterday, but uh, this is in effect up until 10 o'clock this morning. And visibility at the airport's about a half mile, quarter mile, Hondo, Casterville, and mile and a quarter going up in toward New Braunfels. And again, these numbers will change very, very quickly. So don't just rely on what you see right now because you head out the door and you may run into a wall of very thick fog. Uh, nothing is pea soup as of yet, but that can uh, definitely change in the next couple of hours. Like I said, temperatures are way above normal. 56 in Lost Maples, 64 should be in the mid 40s as of right now. Ash and mold are both on the low side. I have a feeling mold's gonna be going up. And as far as today, cloudy fog missed this morning. Cloudy skies, a peak of sunshine is possible. I wouldn't count on it, maybe a shower or two. Tomorrow, very mild start, it's gonna start off just like this. Then the front's going to come through about midday. A couple of showers are possible with it. Temperatures will begin to fall as the front moves on through here. And then it's going to be cloudy, cold, and wet. Just sort of that, that damp chill all the rest of the week. Temperatures only in the 40s and 50s. Boy, you wish you could stay home the rest of the week. Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. All right, the stage is set, Officer Trujillo. Anything yet? Right now, things look pretty good. But remember, usually in our morning traffic, uh, we have two waves. We have that very, very early wave, some folks that are headed home from the overnight shift and those that start things off for everyone else. So that first wave seems to be like we've gotten through that wave. Uh, those accidents have cleared up. They're out of the way. So right now, things look pretty good as far as accidents. However, Taking a look at these trans guy cameras, uh, things don't look promising for those that still have to venture out yet. 37 at Jones, not too bad there, but 2D1 at 410, very bad there. And uh, those long turns and curves, you want to slow down well ahead of those areas, just like right here, 2D1 at Grayson. It's going to be very slick this morning. Remember, general application of the brake and the accelerator throughout your morning commute. Mark and Leslie. Thank you, Marcus. As of this morning, more than 71,000 cases of coronavirus worldwide with more than 1,700 deaths. And after weeks of waiting, 340 quarantined American passengers aboard the Diamond Princess cruise ship are finally back in the United States. One of the two planes carrying those evacuees landed at, in our city at Kelly Field earlier this morning. Our Sarah Costa is live near the runway. Sarah, have the passengers uh, gotten off the plane yet? Yes, we have seen several dozens of passengers get off the plane. And matter of fact, it's why we're off camera. That's why I'm off camera right now, too. You can see those passengers who have been on and off trickling out of that plane. We did see a group of people wearing hazmat suits and face masks greeting those greeting that plane. They walked on board and then they have been escorting some of those passengers off the plane in groups. Also, recently, an Air Force fire truck just pulled up next to that plane. Now, this it's been docked in Japan since February 3rd. That cruise ship has the passengers were taken by bus from 
the, cru the Princess Diamond cruise ship directly to Tokyo where two airplanes were waiting for them. We are still waiting on information on how many passengers are on that plane of the 340 Americans evacuated from the cruise ship. We know that two planes, one landing in Travis, California overnight, the other here right before four this morning carrying the second group. It is confirmed that 14 of the 340 evacuees have the coronavirus. Now, if any of those confirmed with the virus are on the plane that just landed here in San Antonio an hour ago, that is not clear. The State Department saying overnight that those passengers with the virus were allowed to board the flight, sharing the plane with other evacuees who don't have the virus because those with the virus were not showing symptoms. U.S. officials say those passengers were being isolated, separated from other passengers on the flight. If any of those evacuees, if any of those evacuees test positive or become symptomatic, they will be taken on to an off base facility regulated by the CDC. Again, what you're looking at is the plane here at Kelly Field that landed just before for this morning carrying those passengers. We're still waiting for passengers, some of those passengers to still get off that plane. Live from Kelly Field, I'm Sarah Acosta, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Leslie. New into the newsroom this morning, a woman is recovering in the hospital after she was hit by a car. San Antonio police say the woman in her 40s was standing in the middle of North Zarzamora near Calabria around 10 last night when she was run over by a driver in a sedan. The victim claims to have lost her balance. The driver of the car does not face any charges since they stopped to render aid. The victim was transported to University Hospital where she remains in stable condition. And we continue to follow the latest in the case involving a man found dead near Harlandale High School. Bear County Medical Examiner has identified him as 25-year-old Jonathan Hope. According to the medical examiner, the cause of death was ruled a gunshot to the head. It was last Tuesday around 420 on Rosebud Lane where his body was found. A 15-year-old was arrested and is now facing a murder charge in connection with the death. It is unclear if they knew each other. The teen suspect is in the Bear County Juvenile Detention Center. The police officer in Missouri continues to recover this morning after he was shot multiple times last night at a Walmart. The 35-year-old officer working security at the store when he was struck three times by a shoplifter. Missouri authorities still on the search for the gunman after he reportedly got into a car and left the scene. Fortunately, the officer was wearing a bulletproof vest. He is in stable condition. Democratic presidential candidates preparing for another busy week as the Nevada caucus approaches. Over the weekend, early voters lined up to cast their ballots. ABC's John Lawrence shares how hopefuls are stumping throughout the state. Long lines of caucus goers in Nevada this weekend. More than 18,000 Democrats showed up Saturday, the first day of early voting for the state's caucuses. There's a lot of Democrats coming out to beat Donald Trump. And some of the candidates trying to do exactly that are making their case. Nevada, is it your turn now to decide who you want to be the leader of your party and the next president of the United States? And I'm here to audition. Donald Trump, you're going to be a one term president. You're out of here. Recent national polls don't yet show a particular favorite Democratic presidential candidate in the state. The heart of America is so much bigger than the heart of this guy in the White House. We are ready to put the corruption behind us. Are you ready to put the tweets behind us? <laughs> this is our chance. Early voting ends Tuesday, and the caucuses are Saturday. And candidates won't let setbacks like colds keep them from a microphone. We can make government work for the people. We just have to be willing to do it. When you see something wrong in America at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, you show up and fight it. President Trump is heading to Nevada this week to talk criminal justice reform with graduates who were previously incarcerated. I'm John Lawrence reporting. By the way, early voting begins here tomorrow. Speaking of Democrats, the new state party chair in Iowa has just been named. State Representative Mark Smith will be interim chair after Troy Price stepped down amid national backlash over the handling of the recent Iowa caucuses. Smith says his work started Sunday as the IDP begins the partial recanvas of 143 caucus precincts as requested by Mayor Pete Buttigieg and Senator Bernie Sanders' campaigns. 509, 64 degrees. Apple users are preparing for a new iPhone. Still ahead, the latest details on the release date. 
To fast food change going at it again, just in time for Lent, how Arby's targeted McDonald's in this latest feud. And a look outside with the live cam. You need an umbrella. You're going to need it probably pretty much the whole week this week. But don't be fooled by today's warm temperatures because cold air is on the way. Well, welcome back and morning consumer headlines. If you're a fan of White Castle, we've got good news for you. The popular chain made its way to San Antonio, but will be only open to the public for one day. What's even better, you can help your community while enjoying a slider. The fast food burger chain will open its Crave Mobile this afternoon, serving four sliders for $5, which is a donation to the San Antonio Food Bank while supplies last. Be open to the public today from 11 to 4 at the parking lot of the food bank at 5200 Enrique M. Barretta Parkway. Well, Arby's and McDonald's are going at it this year in a new ad campaign, Trolling McDonald's Signature Fish Sandwich. With Lent coming up, some religious groups are giving up meat on Fridays leading up to Easter. The competition over such dinners, seems diners I should say, seems to have sparked a fast food fish war. Arby's released its first ad Sunday targeting consumers on social media, offering a try with new sandwiches. Last year, Arby's and McDonald's engaged in a chicken sandwich war. 514, 64 degrees. Celebrating the Queen of Tejano after 25 years, what Selena fans can expect tomorrow as festivities make their way to San Antonio. Plus, if you are a fan of HQ Trivia, well, the party is over. Up next, why the once popular live game show app has gone out of business. This is Ava. These are Ava's shoulders. They square off, hold firm, bear it all. This is her physical therapist covered by Blue Cross Blue Shield. These are Ava's shoulders now stronger than ever. This is what Medicare from Blue Cross Blue Shield does for Ava. And with plans that fit every budget, imagine what we can do for you. This is the benefit of Blue. Whether your beauty routine is three steps or 57, make Nature's Bounty hair, skin, and nails step one. It's the number one brand, uniquely formulated for silky hair, glowing skin, and healthy nails. Nature's Bounty, because you're better off healthy. No matter the breed, the size, or the age, all dogs descend from wolves. And for thousands of years, they've shared a love for meat. Blue Wilderness is made to satisfy that desire. Feed the wolf that lives inside your dog with Blue Wilderness. In today's Tech Bytes, rumors are flying about the next Apple iPhone. It's believed the company is going to introduce a sequel to the iPhone SE next month. The name is still up in the air, but smartphone case makers seem to believe it will be the SE2. Cases for the phone are already on sale. And the once popular live game show app HQ Trivia is no more. It launched in August 2017 and became the second most downloaded app in the U.S., but it shut down over the weekend because of a funding crisis. One popular former host says it failed because of incompetence and arrogance. Finally, the robot vacuum that can vacuum and mop at the same time. The name? DBOT Osmo 920. It uses artificial intelligence to recognize objects and figure out what it can go over and what it should go around. It's also compatible with both Alexa and Google Assistant. I want one. Those are your tech bites. Well, Selena fans have something to look forward to this year as her legacy will be celebrated right here in San Antonio. The Quintanillas will be joining Mayor Ron Nirenberg at the Alamo Dome tomorrow for an announcement according to a news release from Q Productions. Details of the celebration remain under wraps, but fans have speculated about what's next after the Fiesta de la Flor and Corpus Christi was canceled. Well, 2020 marks 25 years since the singer was gunned down by Yolanda Saldivar. It's 518 right now. Time to check the roadways. How busy is it? Well, it's, we're starting to see some increases in the traffic. Fortunately, uh, no accidents right now. So the previous accidents we had on the highway, the uh, highways rather, those have all cleared out of the way. This is 410 at Austin Highway. And as you can see, or not see there, uh, things don't look too good. That's I-10 410, the interchange. Now granted, this camera's a lot higher up, but uh, this morning uh, when I drove through that area, was a bunch better down at street level. 35, 37, the interchange here in the downtown area. You see that reflection there from the headlights. So the roadways are slick, folks. You will have to give it some extra time this morning. Remember, reduce that speed, increase that following distance. 35 at Flotus, not too bad there. And 37 in Jones, looking pretty good. Moving over to 21, 410 by the airport. Those long turns and curves, those are the areas where you want to slow down 
well ahead of those turns. Remember, throughout your morning commute, general application of the brake and the accelerator. Thank you, sir. Get used to it. Yeah. Yeah, uh, but don't get used to the warm temperatures. No, but the rain. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So this is what you're going to want to do later on in the week. What's that? This picture. Okay. Okay. Find something furry and snuggle up with it. Aww. All your friends, dogs, cats, anything like that. Because it's going to be just that kind of throw the blankets over your head sort of weather and damp, chill. If you could just kind of stay like this and nap all day long. That would be wonderful, but you're going to have to go to work and school later on in the week. This is what it looks like with live cam right now. I mean, it's basically just almost soup out there. We've got the dense fog advisory up until 10 o'clock this morning. All of the metro area going up 35, heading out 10. Not bad over toward the, uh, the Rio Grande today, unlike yesterday where that's where the thickest fog was. Half mile out there at the airport visibility wise. It's dropped down at both Randolph and Porta State at about two thirds of a mile and three quarters of a mile going up in toward New Braunfels. Heavier fog heading out 90 in toward Uvalde. And this is going to be sticking around obviously and it's going to get thicker at times. And then there's also that mist, and it's just hanging there in the air this morning. If you stay outside long enough, you would be soaked probably after a while because there's so much mist hanging in the air. 60 over there, Rio Medina, 51 Tarpley, 64 in town. About 20 degrees above normal right now. We keep a lot of clouds around today. Some computer models want to try and get a glint of sunshine. Okay, can't rule it out, but I wouldn't count on much today. There's also the chance for a, a stray little shower or two. Other than that, this just this morning, we're going to have all these uh, this mist around here. Then tomorrow, we're going to be starting off like we are this morning. Warm, humid, fog, mist, and that front's going to move through later on in the afternoon. That's going to touch off a few more showers, maybe even a thunderstorm as it slides on through here. And then we will keep a lot of rain around throughout the day on Wednesday, Thursday, and probably a break in the action by Friday. So here's what's going on. This is where the situation really comes into play as far as the different layers in the atmosphere. Down here at the surface, we have a lot of humidity, of course, and that's going to remain through tomorrow morning. Then as the front moves through, it pulls down relatively drier air here at the surface, but also cooler air. So it's not as though we're, you know, usually with these fronts, a lot of times it just clears everything out of here. However, we have got an overrunning situation. So all of this moisture, we get the cool air down here at the surface, but all this moisture continues to come in here from the Pacific Ocean. So it's going to stay cloudy pretty much tomorrow through, well, today, except for breaking the sunshine or breaking the uh, clouds here or there, but all the way through the rest of the week, cold air down here at the surface, all those gray clouds, mist and drizzle, and yeah, just not a fun forecast for the rest of the week. 72 degrees today at noon, cloudy. Most of the fog and mist should be out of here by late morning, and then 78 for a high temperature today. A shower is possible, although not very likely. We'll start off tomorrow the same as this morning, and then throughout the day, that front's going to move on through here. A couple of uh, showers are possible. It's going to turn windy tomorrow night into Wednesday, and then we're only in the 50s and 40s through Thursday. A couple of uh, breaks of uh, some sunshine Friday, Saturday, another rain chance, and finally back up the normal temperatures by Sunday. Leslie, Mark? Thanks very much, sir. 522. Five, five, we're over here talking. Yeah, yeah, we're just chatting, catching, catching up. 523, 64 degrees. Even James Bond has been affected by the coronavirus. Coming up next, what it means for the new film's plans. Why would I betray you? We all have our secrets. We just didn't get to yours yet. No Time to Die is the latest film to change plans due to the coronavirus. The 25th James Bond film was scheduled to hold an April premiere in Beijing and a publicity tour throughout China. But with that country trying to control the virus, including closing its movie theaters, those plans have been shelved. I'm a Leslie Odom Jr. has debuted the music video for his song Go Crazy from Mr., his first album of all original material. Odom, who won a Tony and a Grammy for Hamilton, takes his music on the road when his Stronger Magic Tour launches March 7th in Los Angeles. I'm David Copperfield. I'm your nephew. You're the only family I have. What do we do with him? If I were you, I'd wash him. Here's your first look at the historical farce, The Personal History of David Copperfield, based on the Charles Dickens novel and starring Dev Patel in the title role. The comedy reaches theaters May 8th. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Nothing of it.
527, 64 degrees. Knocking out Parkinson's disease one punch at a time. Still ahead, how one local gym is helping people manage their daily struggle. Let's give you a look at last night's NBA All-Star Game, what you might have missed in one of the most entertaining games in recent history. And the latest on the coronavirus. Details we know so far, just as people from the cruise ship docked in Japan arrive right here in San Antonio. Good morning, Monday, February 17th. Oh, Monday. Hopefully you have the day off for President's Day. If you don't, you have to get out. Be careful. Anything but presidential out there. And even if you're just, even if you're off, you're just going to be out running errands. If you're running errands early this morning, you're going to have some difficulty navigating the roadways. Uh, everything is slick out there, so just give it extra time. Reduce that speed. Both hands on the wheel. No cell phones. No coffee cups. I know we're waiting for the sun to come up, and then by then all we're going to do is see more accidents. You know, in the visible daylight. Yep, we're not going to have any beautiful sunrises this morning. There may be a glint of sunshine later on today, but don't count a whole bunch of throughout the rest mm. of the week. And then we've got the big changes coming about midday tomorrow. Big front moving on through here, and okay. it's just going to be kind of gray and damp and pretty gray this morning. This is live cam, and well, maybe you can see a couple of lights kind of cutting through that fog. Dense fog advisory is in effect up until 10 o'clock, and uh, Houston area was also added to this, so it's all the way. If you're trying to go out uh, 10 over toward Houston, you're going to run into a lot of fog there, and not anything down to the west and southwest. Unlike yesterday, that's where the thickest fog was. Visibility is still being reported a half mile at the airport, uh, two-thirds of a mile over there at Port S.A., quarter mile as you head out 90 in toward Medina County, and then just a three-quarters of a mile going up uh, 35 in toward uh, New Braunfels. Austin's not bad. Again, it's uh, much clearer off here to the west and to the northwest this morning, and temperatures are in the mid-60s right now here in town, so we are about 20 degrees above normal right now. Obviously, the humidity is just sky high. Mold and ash are on the low side. I have a feeling mold is going to be going up with today's count that comes out just after uh, 7 o'clock this morning. 72 degrees today at noon. Again, maybe a peak of sunshine later on this afternoon. I wouldn't count on much. Very warm, though, 78 degrees and perhaps a little bit of a shower this afternoon. Like I said, that big front's coming through tomorrow afternoon and then temperatures. It's going to be cold. It's going to be damp. It's going to be just kind of bone chilling the rest of the week. Details on that coming up and look ahead to the weekend in just a couple of minutes. Time's ever traffic right now. So nothing big out there yet, right? Well, you were full all of, of all full of good news. <laughs> and unfortunately, I don't have much better news than what you just gave. Uh, Taking a look at the roadways, folks, is just not inviting at all. Right now, no accidents. However, we're in between that two, uh, that lull in between the two shifts of traffic. So earlier this morning, we had a number of accidents. Those have all cleared off the highways. So right now, things look pretty good. However, we are starting to get some additional vehicles out there traveling. Now, 281 to Grayson, you can see heavier traffic flow in those northbound main lanes of 281 here in the downtown vicinity. Down there somewhere was I-10 or 410 area, and then that's uh, 410 at Furnishburg. So as you can see, uh, or not see, visibility is going to be limited out there. So you will need to reduce that speed, increase that final distance, put away those distractions this morning. Mark? Thank you, Mark. As we continue to monitor the latest on the coronavirus here at home, a State Department spokesman says the U.S. will consider, quote, repatriation of our citizens where appropriate to reduce demands on foreign hospital systems and other global health resources, end quote. ABC's Kenneth Moten shares the latest details with us as cases continue to rise. Overnight, two jumbo jets landing in the United States, one in California, another in Texas. Both passenger planes packed with Americans who have been quarantined on a cruise ship docked in Japan over coronavirus concerns. Cheryl and Paul Molesky, two of the American evacuees, taking a video of themselves leaving the Princess Diamond, the couple quarantined since February 3rd. All right, this is it. I'm about to step into the big wide world, so I have to put my mask on and uh, get going. This was the announcement they were waiting for. Now calling only those American guests from Emerald Deck. You want to see what your next step is? Yes, yeah. we do. Well, your next step is you get to go forward, hand the passport to this gentleman in the yellow. He will hand it to the State Department folks on either side. They will keep your passport. Then they'll put you on a bus. 
The bus will take you to the airplane. The airplane takes you to the United States. Hundreds of passengers on board the ship have tested positive for COVID-19. Americans stricken with the virus can't go home yet. They'll be treated in Japan. And those landing in the U.S. now looking at two more weeks of isolation. With protective gear and short supply around the world, ABC News with an exclusive look inside this 3M factory in South Dakota, where employees are working overtime to make face masks. And as the coronavirus spreads, at least 760 million people in China, more than half that country's population, facing lockdown or travel restrictions. Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. More than 1,100 former prosecutors and other Department of Justice officials are calling on Attorney General William Barr to resign. Former DOJ officials who served in Republican and Democratic administrations posted a statement Sunday saying, quote, Barr's actions for doing the president's personal bidding speaks for his actions, and they have done damage to the GOJ's reputation for integrity. This comes after career prosecutors withdrew from the Roger Stone case after Barr overruled their sentencing. Democratic presidential candidates will take the debate stage Wednesday night in Las Vegas, Nevada. Over the weekend, early voters lining up for hours to cast their ballots. Candidates have until midnight Tuesday to qualify. Uh, the ninth Democratic debate comes just three days after, uh, three days rather ahead of Nevada's first in the West caucus, which will be held Saturday. Early voting will continue through tomorrow. And just a note, early voting for us begins tomorrow. If you didn't know by now, today is President's Day. The federal holiday celebrates the birth of our first president, George Washington, who was born on February 22nd, 1732. Numerous events are planned at the Washington Estate in Mount Vernon, Virginia, including a wreath-laying ceremony at Washington's tomb. With that said, we want to let you know about a few closures happening today. Most municipal offices will be closed today in observance of President's Day, but public safety and emergency services are open. Garbage will be collected normally. Right now, it is 536. 64 degrees. There we go. Still ahead, a glimpse of last night's intense NBA All-Star Game in Chicago. The close final between the two great teams. Plus combating an incurable disease through exercise. How a local boxing gym is doing their part to help. And live cam giving us a look outside as we had to break on your Monday. That says it all. It's just a mess out there. Hand tremors, slow movement, stiffness, loss of balance, just a few of the symptoms people with Parkinson's disease face every day. The neurological disease has no cure, but patients here in San Antonio are finding a way to keep it at bay. They're fighting it with hard punches at a local gym with the help of owners and trainers. It gives you something to do and gives you something to look forward to. Yeah, you forget a lot. And all of a sudden you start trembling and, and, and it comes back to you. Like, yeah, that's right, I do have Parkinson's. These free classes are for patients and their families of uh, caregivers. They're held three times a week, two different gyms. The group also holds a support session second Saturday every month at UT Health San Antonio. On our website, we have all the information about the classes and how you can sign up. Just go to ksat.com and look for this story. Right now we're at 540, 64 degrees. A box office hit topping the best debut ever by a film based on a video game. Up next, how moviegoers are reacting to the latest movie in theaters. New this morning, quarantine passengers from that Diamond cruise ship, Diamond Princess cruise ship, have landed in San Antonio and now left the aircraft. The passengers part of the 340 American evacuees that have been stuck on that cruise ship in Japan for weeks now because of coronavirus. Sarah Costa is live at Kelly Field where that plane landed. Sarah, have you seen any more movement from the plane or the passengers? Yes, we have. You know, that plane landed just before 4 o'clock this morning. We saw just those passengers were kind of trickling out of that plane in groups. Maybe we've seen several dozen come out. There were people waiting for those passengers and they were in hazmat suits and they were wearing face masks and they've been going on and off the plane. There are potentially still passengers on that plane as it is uh, right behind me on the runway here at Kelly Field. Also an Air Force fire truck pulled up next to that plane. Now we are still waiting for information about exactly how many passengers are on that plane. Of the 340 Americans evacuated from the cruise ship, we know that two planes, one landing at Travis, Cal at Travis Air Force Base in California overnight, the other right here 
In San Antonio, it is confirmed that 14 of the 340 evacuees have the coronavirus. We are still waiting for confirmation as to whether any of those 14 with the coronavirus are here in San Antonio. The State Department the State Department saying overnight that those passengers with the virus were allowed to board the flight, sharing the plane with other evacuees who don't have the virus because those with the virus did not have any symptoms. U.S. officials say those passengers were being isolated separately from other passengers. Now, any of those evacuees that test positive or become symptomatic will be taken to an off-base facility regulated by the CDC. Again, that plane landing just before 4 o'clock this morning. We are still waiting to see if any more of those passengers get off the plane. Live from Kelly Field, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Leslie. Bad Boys for Life dropped to fifth place in its fifth weekend out. $11.3 million gave the action threequel a domestic total of $183 million. The romantic drama The Photograph debuted in fourth place with $12.3 million. Blumhouse's Fantasy Island opened third on ticket sales of $12.4 million. The newly renamed Harley Quinn Birds of Prey fell to second place, earning $17.1 million. All right, get in the truck. Really? You're going to help me? Sonic the Hedgehog took the title, zooming off with $57 million, topping Pokemon Detective Pikachu for the best debut ever for a film based on a video game. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Well, lots of people are buzzing about the NBA All-Star Game. Matchup been going down one of the most entertaining contests in recent history. In the end, Team LeBron beat Team Giannis. The final from Chicago, 157-155. Kawhi Leonard scored a game-high 30 points and went on to earn the Kobe Bryant MVP trophy. Both teams playing for a good cause. With the win, $400,000 went to Team LeBron's charity, the Chicago Scholars. That was extremely fun, um, and it was a great way to... Uh, to end uh, 2020 NBA All-Star Weekend. You could definitely feel uh, Bean's presence, um, you know, just from the start, uh, from every moment, from the fans, uh, you know, chanting his name. The weekend was special because uh, for me, um, I hadn't played in the game since 16 or 17 or something. You know what I mean? So you sort of take it for granted at some point. And so uh, me and Kyle Lowry talked about how nice it was just to get out there and the camaraderie and talk to the guys. Amazing. The fans are amazing. Tonight was amazing uh, to cap, cap it off. Obviously, you know, the weekend was a huge tribute to Kobe. Um, you know, but obviously Chicago, Chicago's a beautiful city. It's freezing out here. <laughs> but ultimately, you know, I think the weekend was a success. A lot of great moments during the game last night. If you missed any of it, we have a full recap on our website, ksat.com. Look for the story on our homepage. And don't forget to join uh, Greg and the crew Sunday evenings for instant replay right here on KSAT 12. That's a good show. Wish I could stay up and watch it. Me too. Hmm. Your time, uh, well, it's 4, 547 and it's time to check the roadways. Marcus, what is the latest right now, sir? <clears throat> well, so far, we're still looking pretty good as far as accidents are concerned. You can see right now, no accidents out there on the roadways. As we take a look, closer look through TransGuide, you can see that uh, you're going to have some problems out there as far as visibility and slick conditions. This is I-10 and Frio. That's not ice on the lens. That's moisture. And down below, the roads are slick. Might as well have ice on those long turns and curves. You will have to reduce that speed. Those long turns and curves, just like you see here, you will have to uh, use general application of the brake and the accelerator before you get to those curves. You really do not want to be using that brake as you're in the turn. Uh, could cause some problems there. And if you, this from this vantage point, 21 San Pedro, it's difficult just to make out the Nakoma Bridge, let alone anything past that. And get used to it. Yeah, and get used to it. Mike says, oh, just wait. Things are about to get even more interesting yet again. Yeah, and the nice thing about it is, I mean, we're not going to have temperatures that are going to be just brutally cold, but it's going to be that damp, you know, just gray skies, damp conditions, uh, which is almost tougher to take than just, just plain old cold. Plain yeah. old but it's cold. it's going to be whiplash compared to now, though, isn't it? I mean, the way we're feeling this morning, it's going to be like, whoa. Mm, yeah, we'll yeah. be only in the 40s by uh, all day Thursday. For our, like highs? Yeah, that'll be it. So, uh, picture like this, uh, just a fond memory. <laughs> we're not going to see anything like this until when? Not this week at all. Um, great picture, though. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. A lot of fog out there. This is live cam over there by the airport. Dense fog advisory all the way from Uvalde County in through 
the metropolitan area and all the way over toward Houston. So if you're heading out 10 toward Houston, uh, you're going to be pretty much driving in fog and mist. And the mist is just, I mean, if you stayed outside long enough, I kept saying all morning long, you would be wet after a while because there's so much mist hanging in the air right now. Three quarters of a mile visibility at Port S.A. Randolph, half mile at the airport. So it's it's on the verge of being pea soup. And we don't have any zero visibilities on the map as of right now. It's pretty good over here along the Rio Grande and uh, three quarters of a mile up there in New Braunfels and then a little bit better going in toward Austin. Temperatures are basically 20 degrees above normal. Should be in the uh, mid 40s right now for a normal low temperature. Lots of clouds throughout the day. There could be a little bit of a break in the clouds. I wouldn't count on it too much and maybe even a sprinkly shower, especially off to the west today. Uh, the moisture continues to come back in here pretty much all day long and all night. So tomorrow morning we're going to be starting off just like this with a lot of fog, mist, cloudy skies, mild temperatures. Then the front's going to be coming through during the afternoon tomorrow, and that's going to touch off a few more showers, maybe even a thunderstorm or two as that front initially moves on through here. And then it's just a matter of staying cloudy and staying kind of on the damp side. So here's what's going on, and it's one of those situations where the reason why we don't completely clear out with the front, like a lot of times we usually do, is because it's a very shallow layer of cold air. Then you've got the warm, moist stuff sitting on top of it. So throughout the rest of today, today, the day today and tomorrow, very high dew points up in the 60s. Then the front comes through here. The drier air comes through at the surface, but it's going to be still Humidity, dew point temperatures, and, and air temperatures are going to be close. So relative humidity is still going to be very high down here at the surface. And then we've got the overrunning on top of that. So it won't be clearing out. So we've got that layer of clouds on top of it, all the moisture coming in here from the uh, Pacific Ocean. So that's why we keep all the uh, clouds, mist, and drizzle, a couple of showers around, cool temperatures. It's kind of grilled cheese and soup weather for the latter half of the week and nice warm bowl oatmeal. 72 degrees today at noon, cloudy skies, maybe a shower today. Don't count on it though. Very warm, 78 degrees, a peak of sunshine is possible as well. And then tomorrow, plenty of clouds, a couple of showers. The front's going to move through about midday, 70, say noon, one, two o'clock, and then temperatures will start to drop down throughout the afternoon. We only stay in the 50s on Wednesday. Temperatures basically don't move. And about the same thing on Thursday. Temperatures stay in the 40s, don't move all day long on Thursday. Little break in the clouds Friday, as well as Saturday, mid 50s, and then 65 on Sunday. So no heat waves after today. All right. Thanks, Mike. 551, 64 degrees. Perfect gag gift for your fellow dog owners. Up next, a collar that makes your dog vulgar <laughs> and how you can get one okay <laughs> i'll let you take that one how many how many you want me to order <laughs> we need for the shih tzu <laughs> hey mike what watch your language <laughs> right now uh, pick three numbers four seven three fireball two your daily four numbers five four four eight fireball six and your cash five numbers one five eight sixteen twenty three lotto numbers one twelve thirteen thirty one thirty two forty Powerball from Saturday, 16, 32, 35, 36, 46. Three was the Powerball and a power play of three. Like Truman, what is Hi, welcome back. Hi. The cuss collar may change the way that we look at dogs, Mike Osterhage. This is hilarious. <laughs> the collar throws out a swear word each time your dog barks. <laughs> the maker says it's meant to be a gag gift and doesn't harm the dog. It's also not meant for anti-bark training. Right now, the cuss collar is sold out, but dog owners can sign up to find out more on when they will become available. So, can you determine what cussing the dog does? I, I mean, don't think it's customizable at this point. You know, people for years have always wondered, is there going to be technology where we can, we can hear what our dog is saying to us? Right, because a lot of people do have a voice, you know, put a voice on their, their dogs and everything like that. Mm -hmm. So, But think about it, you know, dogs probably think the same thing when they you want to put them on, it's cold and wet outside, and they go, Ding! you know. And... Can you imagine going through the dog park with a couple of those collars? <laughs> blank you, oh yeah, blank you. <laughs> <laughs> You're watching GMSA <laughs> still to come. When was the last time you spent a good deal of time cleaning your home? If you can't remember, it's probably time for a deep clean. We'll have more on why you should let the pros get your house back up to specs. And Trans Guide right now, murky out there. We're going to get updated with Marcus coming up right here on GMSA. Stick around. We'll be 
right back. I'm Sonic, a little ball of super energy in an extremely handsome package. 57 million bucks for Sonic the Hedgehog. Nailed it! That's a record debut for a movie based on a video game and caps a three-month release delay while the studio redesigned the title character following fan backlash when the first trailer was released. The island's twisting what we asked for. Fantasy Island bowed in third with a better than expected $12.4 million. There's only one thing I have to worry about right now, and that's going down. The black comedy Downhill took a dive, 10th place, 4.6 million. Despite a diagnosis of walking pneumonia earlier in the day, Elton John managed to make it through most of his Auckland, New Zealand shows Sunday night before he lost his voice and was led from the stage in tears. He apologized afterward on Twitter, telling fans, I gave it all I had. Where's 007? You won't see the cast of the new James Bond film, No Time to Die, doing promotional appearances in China. The studios canceled the promo tour in the world's second largest movie market due to ongoing concerns there about the coronavirus. No Time to Die opened stateside April 10th. And Green Day frontman Billy Joe Armstrong turns 48 today. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Christopher Watson, ABC News. New this morning, passengers from the Diamond Princess cruise ship have landed in San Antonio. Good morning, I'm Sarah Costa at Kelly Field, where passengers are still deboarding that plane. And the jury in the trial of Harvey Weinstein expected to start deliberating very soon. And taking a look outside with live cam, not a very pretty start to your Monday. This President's Day is warm and it is just a mess out there. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. We hope you had a wonderful weekend. Good morning to you. It is Monday. It is February 17th. Thanks for being with us this morning. Unfortunately, it looks like we're in for a pretty wet week. We are, and temperatures are about to get blustery around here yet again. Yeah, we're not going to see anything, you know, just bone chilling as far as thermometer readings, but it's going to be that damp chill, uh, especially once we get into Wednesday and through the rest of the week. This morning, anything but chilly out there. We've got very, very warm temperatures, a ton of humidity, and that's leading to a lot of fog. And yeah, the dense fog advisory is still in effect. It's from you know, our metropolitan area, Uvalde County, all the way over in toward Houston. We've got some uh, pretty thick fog in places, although it's not down to zero yet, but Hondo is getting close to a quarter mile visibility, half mile at the airport, three quarters, New Braunfels, and those are some of the the thickest uh, fog readings, Victoria, as well as uh, Carrizo Springs, just at a quarter mile as of right now. 65, so we've fluctuated one degree in the past hour, but about 20 above normal. Mid-upper 50s in the hill country, 65 also in Flores, as well as Pleasanton, Randolph, at least Ash and Mulder on the low side, although I would suspect that Mulder is going to be going up when that updated count comes out in about an hour or so. And throughout the rest of the morning, temperatures will stay just about where they are in town, mid 60s, and then we will make it up into the uh, low 70s by noon. Lots of clouds. We keep obviously the fog and mist around through mid to maybe some straggling fog by late morning. And later on this afternoon, there's a small chance to see a glint of sunshine. I wouldn't count on much of it, though. Also, a shower or two is possible out there. Tomorrow's going to start off pretty much identical to this morning. We're going to have lots of mist, lots of fog, by the way, today in the upper 70s. And then that front's going to move through about midday tomorrow. More on that and what will temperatures do the rest of the week? Details coming up. Time saver traffic right now. There is just, it is damp, it is slick, um, but there's not a lot going on, on the roads yet. Not yet. Right. But yeah, it's right. still early. It's only that six. second wave, when that second wave hits, uh, we're probably in for a big mess for your morning commute unless a lot of folks slow down. Now it is President's Day, but not a lot of folks are off and not all schools are out. So there's still going to be a fair amount of traffic out there on the roadway. So keep that in mind. You don't want to wait too long before heading out the door. You actually want to leave a little bit earlier due to the driving conditions. Uh, things are very slick out there. I-10, 604. And also take a look, 604, your visibility is hindered, but also your traction is not what it usually is out there on the roadway. So remember, reduce that speed increase that following distance and as always buckle up market leslie
Marcus, thank you. New this morning, a plane carrying passengers from the Princess Diamond cruise ship from Japan has landed at Kelly Field. That happened just before four this morning. Our Sarah Coast is live near the tarmac with more. Sarah, do we know any of the passengers actually have the virus in this group of passengers? Good morning, Mark. Yes, we actually do know that 14 of those passengers taken from that cruise ship have been confirmed to have the coronavirus. Now we are still waiting to learn if any of those passengers that have the coronavirus were on this San Antonio plane. Now that plane landed just before four o'clock this morning and we have seen dozens of passengers trickle out of that plane. At one point, the Air Force uh, Air Force fire truck pulled up next to that plane. We saw people wearing hazmat suits and face masks greeted. Those passengers have been escorting them on and off the plane. Now, docked in Japan since February 3rd, the passengers were taken by bus from the cruise ship directly to Tokyo, where two airplanes were waiting for them. We are still waiting on information on how many passengers were on the plane of the 340 Americans evacuated from the cruise ship. We know that two planes, one landing at Travis, California overnight, the other right here in San Antonio at Kelly Field. Any of those evacuees that test positive or become symptomatic will be taken to an off base facility regulated by the CDC. Now, once those passengers are taken off the plane, they will be taken to Lackland Air Force Base. Well, they will begin their mandatory 14, 14 day quarantine session. Live from Kelly Field, I'm Sarah Costa, case at 12 News. Mark and Leslie. Thank you, Sarah. Meanwhile, as Sarah mentioned, the other chartered flight carrying those cruise ship passengers landed at a California Air Force Base early this morning. Touched down at Travis Air Force Base in Northern California just before 2.30 this morning. Earlier, Japan's defense minister said that Japanese troops helped transport all the passengers to Tokyo's airport. Also new this morning, San Antonio Police and Crime Stoppers need your help solving a local murder case. SAPD says 35-year-old John Burton was killed last January in the city's northwest side. He was found dead on a sidewalk in the 7800 block of Wood Chase from an apparent gunshot wound. Police are still looking for those responsible. If you have any information, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers 210-224-STOP. And police also need assistance finding a person responsible for a robbery. This happened at a McDonald's parking lot in the 1100 block of Calabria Road this past December. SAPD says the victim was attacked while leaving the McDonald's. The suspect got away with the victim's property. Once again, call Crime Stoppers if you have any information. It could get you an award. Harvey Weinstein could soon find out his fate. The jury in the trial of the disgraced Hollywood moguls expect to start deliberating tomorrow. The 67-year-old charged with five counts, including rape, predatory sexual assault, and a sexual criminal act. The charge is based on allegations from two women. Both claim Weinstein forcibly performed sex acts on them, one in 2006, the other in 2013. Weinstein has denied all allegations against him, saying everything that happened was always consensual. It's less than a week away from the battle for Nevada in the 2020 race for president. Early voting started over the weekend as candidates hit the state ahead of the next debate, which, by the way, is on Wednesday. Leading the field with the most delegates so far, former South Bend, Indiana Mayor Pete Buttigieg. Meanwhile, former Vice President Joe Biden is counting on a comeback and attacking Bernie Sanders' health care plans. Sanders, along with other candidates, are sharpening their attacks on billionaire Michael Bloomberg. President Donald Trump made a grand entrance before the start of the Daytona 500 over the weekend. He's the second president to ever attend the Daytona 500. And as Grand Marshal, he had the honor of commanding drivers to start their engines. He gave thousands of fans a flyover of Air Force One and then rode onto the track in the presidential motorcade as audiences applauded. The NBA All-Star Game this weekend featured a very special tribute to Kobe Bryant. Magic Johnson told the crowd at Chicago's United Center that the NBA would never see another player quite like Bryant. The crowd responded by chanting Kobe's name. Jennifer Hudson then added a musical performance to the tribute. It also honored former NBA commissioner David Stern, who recently died.
A lot of players not attending All-Star Weekend typically take time out to go home or spend time with family and friends, but Spurs star Patty Mills has done both for a good cause. He's headed back home to donate supplies to towns affected by those Australian wildfires. He posted pictures and these videos on social media over the weekend showed him buying supplies and speaking to locals who lost so much in the fires, even helped build hydro panels. A little later this week, Spurs continue to that rodeo road trip. On Friday, they face the Utah Jazz at 8. Then they travel to Oklahoma City to take on the Thunder. That's coming up Sunday evening at 6 o'clock. Well, in Dallas, close, but no cigar. An attempt to implode a high-rise office building fails. Much of the structure did come down, but a tower remains standing despite numerous attempts to topple it. Crews will have to use a crane and a wrecking ball over the course of the next week to knock down the rest of the structure. The site will become part of a new mixed-use development. So instead of the Leaning Tower of Pisa, it's the Leaning Tower of Junk. Of Junk. Yeah. Mm, didn't work. 608, 65 degrees. Still ahead more on a new robot that can vacuum and mop your floors at the same time. How much are we going to pay for that, right? Mm -hmm. And next, a local woman shares her story of triumph after she battled alcohol and drug addiction. And uh, another look outside with live cam. You need extra time for your morning commute today because it is very messy. Six twelve right now for battling alcohol and drug addiction to be named Touch Tunes Bartender of the Year out of the entire nation. Crystal Sanders is hoping her story inspires others to fight alcohol and drug abuse. Getting clean was a decision she decided to make over three years ago in high school. She discovered drugs would ultimately take her down another dark road. When she got to college, the drugs and alcohol came to a brief halt after she had her first son two months early. Well, she lost custody of her four children and became homeless, jobless, and careless. But after trying to commit suicide, her life changed when she checked into the Alpha Home in 2017. Someone to actually listen to me and go, it's okay that you're screwed up. It's all right. Not only is she now a bartender, but she also works as a direct care specialist for Alpha Home, which serves those fighting alcohol and drug addiction. She also was awarded Touch Tunes Bartender of the Year Award of the entire nation, as Mark mentioned, and has a relationship with all of her children again. You can watch her full inspiring story on KSAT.com. Also trending on KSAT.com right now, if you need a brand new condo, a prestigious three bedroom, four and a half bath home, the exclusive Camp Street Residences is currently <coughs> on sale for $2.8 million. It is more than 7,500 square feet of luxuries in the heart of Southtown. Then it's from San Antonio gems like San Pedro Creek, Hemisphere Park, and of course, the world famous Riverwalk. And if a single Fiesta medal was designed in a San Antonio fairy tale, this would be it. Uriel Diaz, a self-proclaimed hardcore Fiesta fan and Disney lover, designed the Fiesta Queen 2020 medal. It pays tribute to Selena with a Cinderella twist. Features the iconic purple jumpsuit worn by Selena during her last performance nearly 25 years ago, carried by two bluebirds. You can read more about it on KSAT.com. That's so sweet. Very cool. 614 right now. Oh, Marcus, oh, what's Marcus. happening? Well, right now we're looking at an accident northbound 281. We're going to zoom in right here, folks. Northbound 281 there at Hildebrand Avenue. And that is definitely causing problems for some folks. Slick conditions more than likely a contributing factor. You can see they're on that outside turn, which uh, lead would lead one to believe that maybe they were coming around the bend just a wee bit fast this morning. Remember, roads are slick. You will have to use reduced speeds throughout your morning commute, general application of the brake and the accelerator as we have additional emergency vehicles arriving to assist with this. Looks like things are down just to two lanes. We may just be down to one lane here for a short period of time. Northbound 281 as you're approaching Hildebrand. Remember, you want to slow down well ahead of this area. You do not want to be applying the brake in the turn because that could be disastrous this morning. Yeah, no doubt about it. I've been in that area before a little bit, of, and I thought I slowed down plenty, and I wound up kind of spinning out a little bit in the past. Yeah, it doesn't take much, yeah. so please be careful. You know, when it comes to airports, mm -hmm. um, you have cargo planes. And they they told me too. about landing, like, in the middle of the ocean, you know, uh, you know, an island somewhere, looking out the side of the, the cockpit, going straight down the runway. Wow. But at least I think with on C fives and B fifty twos, the wheels can turn. The so landing they, gear can rotate to assist with this so maneuver. The plane wow. can actually land mm -hmm. on the ground sideways. But with those, 
because uh, the gentleman that used to be our helicopter pilot flew big jets one time. He said, you got to time it just right so you just at the last minute turn the plane so you don't twist the landing gear off. So. Tense to watch. Good job, pilots. Yeah. So, uh, it's been kind of mild. It's been sort of wet. And look at this. That is a picture of some blue bonnets. Oh, really? So it's too early yes. for that, isn't it? Could this, well, that's the, the question. Is it a little bit early for that? Because, you know, we still have the chance, even though we don't have anything in the forecast, the chance for uh, some more freezing temperatures. Because are we done freezing yet? The average last freeze is February 24th. Now, we did have one uh, a couple of weeks ago, freezing uh, reading. Actually, excuse me, a couple of days ago, it was on uh, the morning of uh, uh, Valentine's morning. We uh, Last week got down to it. And then the latest we've ever hit freezing here is back in 1987. It was on April the 3rd. So that's the latest it's ever been. Now, the past couple of years, last year, our last freeze was uh, well into March on the 6th. Same thing five years ago. But then... 18, 16, 17, and 18, those years, we ended up freezing. The last one was uh, right before Valentine's. So uh, of recent years, maybe the trend would be that we would not hit a freeze again, but there's always that chance. February always has those kind of, kind of some of the weirdest weather we've ever seen in uh, the month of February around here. So here's what it looks like live cam right now. It is definitely murky out there. We've got a ton of fog. We've got dense fog advisory for a good chunk of our area up until 10 o'clock this morning. Visibility still at half mile. It's improved somewhat at Port S.A. And then just a quarter mile over there at Randolph, half mile Kerrville and nothing down to zero visibility as of yet. Notice how it's changed there in Rock Springs. A little bit of fog is now showing up. So this is going to continue to change, probably get thicker as the morning goes on. Mid 60s right now, 20 degrees above normal. Well, obviously, lots of clouds, and we're going to keep a lot of clouds around throughout the day. Maybe a peak of sunshine. I wouldn't count on a lot of it, though, and then also maybe a sprinkle or two. Humidity continues to get pumped in here overnight, so we're going to have the same thing tomorrow morning. Mist, drizzle, some fog around here, maybe a couple of sprinkly showers. And then by about midday, rain chances will be a little bit better, including a couple of thunderstorms. That's as the front works its way on through here. And it will will hit our high temperature tomorrow, probably about early afternoon, right around 70. And then temperatures will continue to uh, drop down in the overnight hours. And what we're going to be seeing, though, is an, kind of an overrunning situation, which means we keep Cool air here at the surface, moisture on top of that, and that's why it's going to stay just gray, kind of that damp chill the rest of the week and much, much cooler temperatures. Today is on the, obviously, the warm side of things, 72 degrees at noon, already well above normal, and then we top off at 78 today, maybe even a couple of folks hitting 80. A shower is possible, and then tomorrow, very warm start, and then the front moves through about midday. We hit 70, and temperatures will drop throughout the afternoon. It's going to be windy on Wednesday only in the 50s, damp, chilly, even cooler on Thursday. No freezing temperatures thanks to the cloud cover, but that just keeps it that damp chill all basically all week long. A little bit of sunshine Friday, Saturday, more showers on Sunday. It's going to be nice to see sunshine this weekend. Uh, it'll be limited. All right, thanks. Right now it's 620, 65 degrees. Coming up next, we're going to have more on the woman who allegedly posed as a baby photographer in an effort to kidnap a newborn child. Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it right now on KZ.com for your chance to win a $25 gift card from We Are Circle K. Johnson & Johnson is a baby company. But we're also a company that controls HIV, fights cancer, repairs shattered bones, relieves depression, restores heart rhythms, helps you back from strokes, and keeps you healthy your whole life. From the day you're born, we never stop taking care of you. Dispatch, we got a cold bubbly. Are you going to get him down? No. Bubbly sparkling water. Crack a smile. I am totally blind. And Non24 can throw my days and nights out of sync, keeping me from the things I love to do. Talk to your doctor and call 844-214-2424. In this morning's GMA First Look, 
fake baby photographer. Hi, my name is Juliet Parker. Just last year, Juliet Parker was running for mayor of Colorado Springs. This morning, she is behind bars. We believe she was attempting to find a small female infant and was going to kidnap the baby. Investigators say the 38-year-old posing as a baby portrait photographer reached out to a Facebook mom's group, offering free newborn photo sessions to build up her portfolio. She believed that she was drugged and that they were going to take her baby. Through our investigation, we've determined that that probably was the case. Coming up at 7 a.m., we'll tell you about the other mothers now coming forward who say they too contacted Parker about the photography ad and why law enforcement officials are now asking for their help. With your GMA First Look, I'm Elizabeth Herr, ABC News, New York. Sprint and Timo will get the green light on that major merger. This following the New York Attorney General's decision not to appeal after losing a case aimed at stopping the deal. New York and a dozen other states sued to stop the $26 billion merger. They say it would hurt consumers by reducing competition. Meanwhile, California's Attorney General is still considering options. Rumors are flying about the next Apple iPhone. I believe the company is going to introduce a sequel to the iPhone SE next month. The name's still up in the air, but smartphone case makers seem to believe it will be the SE2. Cases for the phone are already on sale. Once popular live game show app HQ Trivia No More, it launched in August of 2017 and became the second most downloaded app in the U.S., but it shut down over the weekend because of a funding crisis. One popular former host said it failed because of incompetence and arrogance. A new Arby's ad campaign is trolling McDonald's signature fish sandwich ahead of Lent. Catholics and some other Christians give up meat during Fridays leading up to Easter. The competition over such diners seems to have sparked a fast food fish war. The ad blitz started over the weekend. Arby's has already been targeting consumers on social media, offering a try of its new sandwiches. A robot vacuum that can vacuum and mop at the same time. The D-Bot Osmo 920 uses artificial intelligence to recognize objects and figure out what it can go over and what should be going around. It's also compatible with Alexa and Google Assistant. So it looks like a, just a, another version of a Roomba. Mm -hmm. But it mops. If you're headed to the rodeo today, a lot of events happening throughout the day. 8.30 this morning, there's a horse judging contest at Expo Hall from 2 to 8. Robert Castillo's BMX Freestyle team is performing without David Sears. And country singer Morgan Wallen putting on the big show tonight. The concert starts at 7 o'clock. Your time now is 626 and it's 65 degrees outside. Still ahead, the 2020 Democratic presidential candidate swarming Nevada ahead of another big debate this week. And should you leave the cleaning of your house to the professionals? Why experts say deep cleaning your home is a must and you may not be able to do it yourself. And the roads were trans guide. Uh, it's going to be a really messy commute out there. You can tell that because of the road conditions. Mark has, has an eye on things on this President's Day 2020. We'll be right back. Passengers from the Diamond Princess cruise ship have landed in San Antonio. Good morning, I'm Sarah Acosta. What's next for these evacuees as they begin their 14-day mandatory quarantine session? Coming up, a busy weekend on the campaign trail as the 2020 race heads west to Nevada. I'm Andrew Dimbert in Washington. And we have a mess out there on this President's Day. It's so murky, we can only see across the street from our downtown studios right now. That is Central Catholic High School on this very foggy Monday morning. Good morning to you. It is Monday. It is February 17th. Thanks for being with us this morning. Slick roads means probably long commutes. Long commutes. We're getting some additional accidents out there now that we have that second wave of traffic starting to hit the roadway. So southbound 35. Uh, between uh, right before you get to Hubertus Road, between Friesen Hunt and Hubertus, watch out for an accident there. Then on the northbound 35 Axis Road in that same vicinity, another accident. Then northbound 281 here in San Antonio. As you're approaching uh, Hildebrand, you have those turns, those curves. Just past that, they managed to move the accident away from the turns. So now it's on the straightaway right there in the almost basin area. Oh boy, just getting going here. Yep. Um, are we in an official car wash hold pattern? Probably so. Okay. Uh, I got mine washed on Saturday. And, ah. yeah, so at least it had a couple of days worth. But, um, you know, the, the one thing I think that is most noticeable this morning, the warm temperatures, the humidity, but that moisture. I mean, it's just this mist hanging there. And so much, if you 
stayed outside long enough, you'd probably just your clothes would be damp. And as you can see on the camera out here, it's behind having trouble focusing, but there are some little droplets uh, everywhere. So it is uh, it's a lot of mist. We have a dense fog advisory for the next uh, few hours up until 10 o'clock for the metro area surrounding counties and then over toward Houston and it does include portions of the hill country uh, half mile visibility at the airport. It's just above a mile at Randolph three stints and one at uh, New Braunfels and then it's a little bit thicker heading in toward portions of the hill country of Valde Carrizo Springs both at a quarter mile and uh, Victoria has come up to a half mile now, but we'll continue to keep this around obviously for the next few hours and it may get thicker at times. Temperatures, yeah, it is just very, very warm out there. We're actually at about, just about the normal high temperature right now, 20 degrees above the normal low. Ash and Moeller both on the low side. The updated count's gonna come out in about an hour or so. And what you see is what you get, cloudy fog and mist, cloudy, maybe a shower and then also maybe a peak of sunshine today. But basically, I think just cloudy skies, very warm. We're going to be in the upper 70s today. We start off same thing as we're seeing right now tomorrow morning with warm temperatures, mist, drizzled, and that front's going to move through about midday. That is going to squeeze out a couple of showers, perhaps even a thunderstorm. Temperatures will slowly drop down in the afternoon tomorrow, and then we go into the rest of the week. It's going to be cloudy. We're going to have cool temperatures only in the 50s on Wednesday, only in the 40s on Thursday. Windy on Wednesday as well, and just that damp, you know, those gray skies, damp conditions. Anything's going to be better than that, so it will improve a little bit, a little bit by uh, Friday in the weekend. Details coming up. Time saver traffic right now. So you said the accidents are always starting to show up. <coughs> Excuse me. That's right, Mike. <coughs> Excuse me, folks. As we take a look at the roadways, we already have some accidents out there, so let's go up far north. Southbound 35 coming from New Braunfels between Friesenhahn and Hubertus Road. One accident there slowing folks down those southbound main lanes. And then here, northbound 281, the accident originally occurred right there, Hildebrand. They did manage to move the accident a little bit further up to that straightaway until they can wait for the tow truck. So as you can see, we have a number of emergency vehicles out there. Northbound 21, still a little bit slow going. Remember, reduce that speed, increase that following distance. Leslie. Thank you, Marcus. As of this morning, there are more than 71,000 cases of the coronavirus worldwide and more than 1,700 deaths. And after weeks of waiting, 340 quarantined American passengers aboard the Diamond Princess cruise ship are finally back in the United States. One of the two planes carrying those evacuees landing in our city at Kelly Field this morning. Sarah Coast is live near the runway. So, Sarah, have all of the passengers gotten off the plane? It looks like it, Leslie. Uh, you know, when they landed at 4 o'clock this morning, we slowly saw groups of those passengers trickle off the plane in about groups of 12. And about 15 minutes ago, we saw three charter buses drive off on on the tarmac here, escorted by other cars. We're assuming that's everyone off the plane at this time. You know, that plane landing just before 4 o'clock this morning, people in hazmat suits and masks greeted the plane when it arrived, walking on and off the plane, escorting the passengers. We do know that 14 people out of the 340 have been confirmed to have the coronavirus. We are waiting to learn if any of those with the virus were on the plane that landed here in San Antonio. Docked in Japan since February 3rd, the passengers were taken by bus from the cruise ship directly to Tokyo, where two airplanes were waiting for them. The latest information we have from the U.S. State and Health and Human Services is that out of the 380 American quarantine passengers on the Diamond Princess cruise ship, 340 were put on two planes. One of those planes landing in California at Travis Air Force Base overnight. The second here in San Antonio, where Joint Base San Antonio has been making preparations for those evacuees who will now begin a mandatory 14 day quarantine for the coronavirus. Now, if any of those passengers begin to show any kind of symptoms of the virus, they will be taken off of Lackland Air Force Base and taken to a medical facility ran by the CDC. Live from Kelly Field, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Back to you guys. Right now, 636, a year old murder continues to haunt San Antonio homicide investigators. They're trying to figure out who shot and killed a man at a Northwest Side apartment complex. Katrina Weber is at Public Safety Headquarters live with more on the latest on the effort to track down his killer. And Katrina, good morning. You say it involves help from the public. 
Well, good morning. Yes, they have put out an appeal through Crime Stoppers, hoping for more information on this case. Police hope that by bringing this to light again, that they will finally get the answers they need. Well, the victim in this case was 35-year-old John Burton. He was found shot to death in January of last year at an apartment complex in the 7800 block of Woodchase. His murder made news when it happened. Police told us at that time that they had received a call about shots fired, then walked around that property until they found Burton down on a sidewalk. He had suffered a fatal gunshot wound. Officers learned that Burton had just left an apartment right before he was shot. And they did question other people there, but did not make any arrests. That is why they have turned to Crime Stoppers now. Anyone with information is asked to call their number, which is 210-224-STOP or 224-7867. And there could be a reward involved for the right information. Reporting live near Public Safety Headquarters, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Also new this morning, a woman is in the hospital after another driver T-burned a car. SAPD says the crash happened just after 1230. It was on Culebra and Micron Drive on the west side. According to police, a man driving a truck ran a red light, T-boned a vehicle. She was taken to a nearby hospital in critical condition. The man is being evaluated for DWI. In your morning headlines, more than 1,100 former prosecutors and other Department of Justice officials want Attorney General William Barr to resign. It comes after career prosecutors withdrew from the Roger Stone case after Barr overruled their sentencing. The Attorney General also pushed back against the president in an unusual interview and separately ordered an examination of politically charged cases involving those close to President Donald Trump. Vice President Mike Pence's chief of staff said Sunday that Barr, quote, does enjoy the support of... President Trump, end quote. The 2020 presidential candidates hit the state of Nevada ahead of the next debate, which is coming up Wednesday. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has more on the strong showing in the Nevada caucus as early voting gets underway. Over 18,000 Democrats turned out for the first day in the first contest in the West. For the candidates, please welcome Mayor Pete. Leading the field with the most delegates so far, former South Bend, Indiana Mayor Pete Buttigieg. He's taking aim at conservative talk radio host Rush Limbaugh, who said he won't get elected because he's been kissing his husband on stage after debates. I'm pretty good at holding my tongue, uh, but it is tempting to point out some differences between my understanding of family values and those of this president and his supporters like Rush Limbaugh. Former Vice President Joe Biden is counting on a comeback and attacking Bernie Sanders' health care plans. He's been talking about health care, me Medicare for all, universal health care for 35 years. Nothing's happened. I helped get past Obamacare. Sanders, meanwhile, going after billionaire Michael Bloomberg. But he thinks he can buy this election. Well, I got news from Mr. Bloomberg, and that is the American people are sick and tired of billionaires buying elections. Bloomberg is not competing in Nevada, but he was on the minds of many of the candidates. Mike Bloomberg. Uh, Michael Bloomberg. Uh, Mayor Bloomberg. Who would like to see him in the next debate. I can't beat him on the airwaves, but I can beat him on the debate stage. President Trump plans to hold a rally the day before the caucus in Nevada as he continues to try and disrupt the Democrats. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, Washington. It's exactly 640. We're at 65 degrees. Coming up next, when it comes to deep cleaning your home, you may need to hire professional help. We'll tell you why. When was the last time you pulled out your furniture or broke out the scouring pads to clean your home? If you can't remember, it's probably time for a deep clean, and you may need help. In this morning's Angie's List report, our Marilyn Moritz takes a look at what you can expect when a cleaning crew goes deep. Tabitha Sells has cleaned houses for six years. Every day, she dusts, disinfects, and vacuums. It's all part of the standard job. When a client wants more, she and her crew go after the dirt, dust, and grime you can't see. We'll open the cabinet doors and clean the inside of the cabinet doors and that ledge where just stuff collects over time. Um, we clean the inside of all the, the appliances, refrigerator, oven, microwave. Uh, we clean the baseboards thoroughly and we polish them afterwards. Spring is a great time to consider having your house deeply cleaned and usually you should be doing that every two to three months, especially if you're getting ready to sell your house is a time that you want to make sure you have it done. 
Cleaning deep also means cleaning high, where things can be hard or even dangerous to reach. We do anything up high, and it doesn't matter how high it is, we will clean it. Uh, exhaust fans, ceiling fans, vents in the walls. On average, our members have reported spending about $230 for a deep clean, and that's about $100 more than a standard clean. And if you're looking to hire a house cleaner for the first time, you shouldn't be surprised if they recommend a deep cleaning as your first visit. The service should provide all the supplies, but if you want environmentally friendly supplies, you might need to bring those yourself. Marilyn Moritz, KSET 12 News. Quarter to seven. Time to check the roadways once again. Very busy morning. It is a very busy morning. However, the good news is the accidents that we did have, officers were able to move those off the roadway completely, so traffic is moving once again, uh, both on 35 and 21. However, that does not mean resume speed is normal. You want to reduce speeds this morning, allow some extra time to reach your destination. Let's take a look outside through Trans Guide. This is 21 up there by the airport. Those long turns and curves, just like that exit ramp, those uh, flyover ramps there between 21 and 410. You want to slow down well ahead of those areas throughout your morning commute, general application of the brake and the accelerator, and allow enough space out there. 410 Param Vital, as you can see, traffic eastbound and westbound. Definitely a lot busier than uh, some folks may have anticipated. And then 37 and Jones here in the downtown vicinity, north and south by lane, still running smoothly with no issues. As we take a look at uh, something here in the downtown area, I-10 Frio, eastbound and westbound lanes of I-10 where the upper and lower levels meet. You can see that uh, we're starting to get a little bit of congestion as folks back up, slow down for the uh, 21 north and 21 south exits from eastbound I-10. Thank you so much, Marcus. So warm today, but that's right. going to be changing by midday tomorrow. It will. Uh, the front's going to move on through. It, it's not going to be cold in the afternoon tomorrow, but temperatures will continue to drop down. And then uh, the rest of the week is going to be on the, the chilly side and kind of damp out there. So if you are heading out to the rodeo this week, last week at the rodeo and all the indoor activity, I love it's always great. The kids, little kids' faces when they get up close and personal with all the some of the animals out there. Look at that little face in that guy. One of our uh, loyal, loyal viewers, yeah. Yvonne, sent that oh. one. Oh, uh, yes, Yvonne Sherney. Just, oh, that ear-to-ear -ear grin. It's a great picture. Thank you very much for that. So head on out to the rodeo, and like I said, there's a lot to go, a lot to do inside, obviously, even though it's going to be kind of eh, sort of weather. Um, yeah, speaking of in, eh, this is out there. I think it's looking northwest by the airport. I'm not sure because we can't hardly see from that vantage point. That's uh, the live cam out there. Dense fog advisory till 10 o'clock. Good chunk of the area, with the exception of the hill country and over there uh, by the Rio Grande Valley and down to the south. Visibilities really have haven't changed all that much in the past uh, couple of hours. Port SA, though, has improved ever so slightly from what it was earlier this morning. And it's pretty good out there. Carrizo Springs is now down to zero visibility and just a half mile up the road, Kerrville, quarter mile in New Valley. We're at our basically normal high temperature right now, about 20 degrees above where we should be for a low. We keep clouds around throughout the morning. And the afternoon, maybe a peak of sunshine here or there. And then tomorrow morning is going to be pretty much a repeat of what we're seeing right now. Then throughout the afternoon, there's that front that moves on through, and it's going to touch off a couple of showers, maybe even a thunderstorm or two as it moves through in the afternoon. And the timing of it's still a little bit iffy. Some computer models are a little quicker with it. Some hold it back a little bit more, even in toward, uh, toward dinner time. But it will definitely be coming on through here. And it's not one of those that clears things out because... We're going to have a good overrunning situation. Now, as far as the humidity is concerned, here's the uh, dew points that stay well up into the 60s. Then the wind shifts around by tomorrow afternoon. That's going to pull in drier air here at the surface, but also cool air at the same time. So relative humidity is still going to be on the high side. And we still have an overrunning situation. So we keep those clouds coming in here like they are right now from the southwest, from the Pacific Ocean. So here's the stream of moisture that's going to be sliding in on top of us. Cool air at the surface, all that moisture on top, and that just means that kind of bone chilling sort of weather. I don't think a lot of rain associated uh, with the frontal passage over the next couple of days, but just that uh, that wet stuff. 72 degrees at noon today, cloudy skies, high temperature up to 78, well above normal, of course. And then tomorrow, we start off like this morning, and then we make it up to about 70 in the early afternoon. Front comes on through, a couple of showers, maybe a thunderstorm with that. And then temperatures only stay in the 50s on Wednesday. It's going to be breezy tomorrow night and Wednesday. And then only in the 40s on Thursday. 
<laughs> That's going to be a fun day. <laughs> and a little bit of sunshine Friday, Saturday, and finally make it back to 65 degrees by Sunday. All right, get through the week. Mm -hmm. All right. Together. Together, we can do it. 649, 65 degrees. I'll take you outside once again <laughs> as we head to break. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> you going to return the favor? Yes. I'll knock him off his chair. Smack him. Yep. Quarantine passengers on the Diamond Princess cruise ship have landed in San Antonio. Good morning, I'm Sarah Acosta at Kelly Field, where passengers have deboarded the plane and loaded up onto buses heading towards Lackland Air Force Base. That plane arriving just before 4 o'clock this morning, then passengers deboarding into groups at about a dozen at a time. Just after 6 this morning, three buses drove off with those passengers headed to Lackland Air Force Base. People in hazmat suits and masks greeted the plane when it arrived, walking on and off the plane, escorting the passengers. We do know that 14 people out of the 340 have been confirmed to have the coronavirus. We are waiting to learn if any of those with the virus were on the plane that landed in San Antonio. Docked in Japan since February 3rd, the passengers were taken by bus from the cruise ship directly to Tokyo, where two airplanes were waiting for them. The second plane landing in California at Travis Air Force Base. Now those here in San Antonio will begin their mandatory 14 day quarantine session. From Kelly Field, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Port San Antonio is the Alamo City's technology campus with more than 13,000 people on property generating over $5 billion. But Port SA is so much more than a place of work. It's a place of innovation and education. Today on GMS 8 9, Max Massey will have more from the San Antonio Museum of Science and Technology with a new cybersecurity simulator. Check it out at 9. That's 9 o'clock, but right now we want to check out the roadways. Marcus, any new accidents? No accidents right now. Now take a look. This is uh, I-10 and Frio. We're going to look at some key areas. 281 and almost. It's been a problem earlier this morning. Right now, things are looking pretty good. Now we're moving over to I-10, 410. As you see there, that interchange on the northwest side. Visibility really has not uh, improved at all in this area or any of the other areas as far as what we can see on TransGuide. So give it some extra time, folks. Mike. Here's a look with live cam and about the same picture and is trying to focus with all that mist and everything on the lens, but it's tough to do. Dense fog advisory remains in effect up until 10 o'clock this morning. Visibility uh, it has improved a little bit out there at the airport. Same thing with Randolph, but uh, don't let that fool you because we're still going to keep this fog around for a while. Very, very warm and humid this morning. We're going to make it up to the upper 70s later on today and then tomorrow. About the same situation starting off. The front moves through in the afternoon and it's going to be cold and damp and cloudy and windy on Wednesday, Thursday, even colder, damper. Damper? damper? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, though? That's part well, of the fireplace, right? When is it going to be the dampest? <laughs> yeah, it's going to be it's grilled cheese and soup weather. I'll put it that way Wednesday through the end of the week and a little bit of sunshine Friday, Saturday, and back to the 60s by Sunday. And if does Mike really like grilled cheese and soup that much? Yes. Yeah. He does. Mm. It's a true story. But isn't that, or mac and cheese, isn't that perfect for that kind of weather? It is. I'm making my or, chicken and dumplings again. Or mini shepherd's pies. Those look good too. Ooh. Oh. Have a great day, everybody.